Well, I like to write. I don't type. For drama, you gotta have two. You gotta have people button heads. And you gotta believe in what you do, what you have, and you have to work on your craft, whatever it is. You gotta work on it. You gotta make a way. And when there doesn't seem to be a way, you gotta make a way. Write about yourself. Write about what you know. Find your voice and work on your voice. I still feel I'm very blessed because I'm doing what I love. And that's making films. Write about yourself. Write about what you know. There's some other stuff you know nothing about. And you're not going to do spend the time or money and do the research to learn whatever you're trying to do. So just try to pull something from within. Find your voice and work on your voice. Because everybody does not have the gift of knowing exactly what they want to say. And to be honest, a lot of times people have not discovered who they are. Every movie is hard. Is and for the filmmakers who are here in the audience, there's nothing easy about filmmaking. It's hard to make a terrible film. So, but when you're surrounded by people in front of the camera and everybody's united and sympathetic and constant on what you're trying to do, you know, that's where the fun. You know, comes from. I would give the same advice to an aspiring filmmaker and writer. Write. Both of those disciplines you need to write. And it's something I tell my film students. I've been teaching, I've been a professor at NYU the last 15 years. In the graduate film school where I went. And if you did a survey the last 25 years and looked at the first films of directors, I would say a large percentage of those films, those directors wrote that script. So I think that's a, a big clue when I'm talking about film, that if uh, you want to be a director, you could write also, you got a much better chance of getting your first film made. For drama, you gotta have two, you gotta have people button heads. And it elevates the drama when they're both, what they're saying is right. So let's, 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 let's break this down. Buggins out like, fuck you, Sal. I'm tired of motherfucking Italians. I had another story about it, but on the wall. There are no, no, there's not a busload of Italian Americans coming from Bensonhurst, Howard Beach. The beds die, do or die. Not, not, not 89. Your livelihood consists of black and Puerto Rican people spending money in your pizzeria. It was Danielle, Danielle pronounced it, pizzeria. So therefore, don't you think you just, it would be respectful to have some black people on the wall? That's a valid point. Yep. Let's go to bugging out. What should I just do? Sal or bugging out? <laughs> Which one I just do? Sal or bugging out? Yeah. I did Sal? Out. All right, now Sal's like, mm. yo, motherfucker. <laughs> if you want a pizzeria, build your own motherfucking pizzeria. <laughs> this is my business. And I could do what I want. Like Hollywood. Yes. So there's the drama. Two people who are, who believe in their beliefs, and they're going head to head. How are you growing as a filmmaker? Well, I'm growing all the time. I think one of the reasons why uh, I continue and always hope to make films is because there's so much to learn with this, with this thing called cinema. I mean, Kurosawa, one of the greatest filmmakers ever, he's 86, 87 years old, he still says there's things he doesn't know. 
If he could say that, then you, then I, you know, I, there's no I could even attempt to say that I know everything about filmmaking. And I myself see growth in my film. She's got to have it. School days, do the right thing. Mo better. Jungle Fever. Malcolm X. To me, it's you know, we're going up. You mentioned not, not just me, but everybody I work with. Robert Reed who cast my films. Ernest Dickerson who shoots them. Ruthie Carter, the costume designer. We all, when Thomas Productions and all of us worked yeah. together since, she's got to have it. I believe you said in an interview with NYU that you can't stand a lazy student. Right. What do you see in most independent filmmakers, however old they are, that makes them lazy and that hinders their career? Well, I don't want to make a blanket statement about independent filmmakers, but I've had students who are lazy, and laziness is something I really can't tolerate. So, because of laziness, I think that that speaks of a sense of entitlement. And that's just not a good look in this industry where you think that you are entitled to something, that you, de you deserve something because you're wherever you think you are. It doesn't work like that. To make it, you gotta bust your black ass. You gotta be re re relentless. You gotta persevere. You gotta be focused. And you gotta believe in what you do, what you have. And you have to work on your craft, whatever it is. You gotta work on it. I tell my students in when you graduate film school that there's no such thing as overnight success. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. You gotta work, you gotta work, you gotta work. And, and another thing I like to say is that, as in my experience, the people who are able to hurdle obstacles are the people that are doing it because this is what they want to do. This is what I love. This is my calling. Versus the people who are doing it because I want to make money and be famous. When you use obstacles, that goal is not going to get you over. It's not going to equal the fire you're going to have in you if you're doing it because you have, you're saying, so I have to do this. I have to express myself. I have to tell my story. I have to write this play. I have to write this movie. I have to write this song. That's, that's where... You can make it happen. But you gotta work though. I've been doing this 30 years, you know, you gotta work. And I'm still learning, you know, so you, you gotta you gotta work. You, you can never ever ever get to a, that mentality like you know it all. Mm -hmm. Like you can't work on your craft. That's that ain't gonna make it. Yeah. You got you got to you got to make films. People making feature films on their their phones. You got to make it and get it seen. Film festival right here, <laughs> my man right here. <laughs> but you cannot underestimate who sees your film. A whole bunch of people. They put their stuff up. I mean these these agencies and. Studios, they have people who the only job is to look at stuff on the internet, you know, so that's definitely a way to to get seen. But you all at the same time you gotta develop your own voice. If you're doing something where you're just imitating something that's, you know, hot or trendy, you know, that's they're looking for original voices. So I think at, at this at this stage, try to develop your voice. So as you're a filmmaker, if you're trying to be a filmmaker, you have to understand this is a craft, and, and, and you, have, you don't have to go to film school. I'm going to say it again. You do not have to go to film school to be a filmmaker. The only reason why I went to NYU, because at that time, we did not have this digital technology. Then, the greatest obstacle to making films was getting access to equipment. And so my generation went to film school. We did not go to film school to get a degree. 
a degree, an MFA from NYU or USC doesn't mean anything. When you come out of film school, if you're a director, you need to come out with the film. If you're a writer, you need to come out with a, a, a screenplay. If you're a DP, you need to come out with the real. So we didn't care about the degree. We wanted to come out with the film. And again, my generation, it was for the digital technology, so you had to get access to the film. By going to film school, you, had, you got access to the equipment, your crew was your class, mates. <laughs> NYU and all film schools have agreement with SAG, so you got to work with actors free. You didn't have to pay for actors. And you also had access to the facilities to edit. So that's why I went to film school. Well, I like to write. I don't type. Pen to paper. But the way my brain works, this doesn't work. It, 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 it blocks the flow. His mother says, you always have to be 10 times better. So he keeps writing and does not stop. He writes about the heat, about the game, about the block, and home. He writes with his heart, his music, his way of seeing things, and always by hand, his left hand. And it keeps writing and writing and writing and writing until it all cuts to black. 